So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he mentioned that before the end of times, Allah azza wa jal will start taking away the lives of pious people. Righteous and pious scholars and ulama will begin to pass away. He mentioned, يَذْهَبُ الصَّالِحُونَ الْأَوَّلْ فَالْأَوَّلْ وَيَبْقَى حُفَالَ كَحُفَالَةِ الشَّعِيرِ أَوِ التَّمَرُ لَا يُبَالِيهُمُ اللَّهُ بَالَةً That Allah Azza wa Jal will take away the righteous, pious people. Pious people will start leaving the world and dying. الْأَوَّلْ فَالْأَوَّلْ One after another, the best, ثُمَّ the best, then after that, the best. One by one, until you see the righteous people will no longer be with you. And then what will, leave, what will be left behind is a leftover garbage. He mentioned a uh, hufala, which is basically the leftover raddi, useless fruit, or useless dates, useless barley or wheat that is left at the end of the day by a seller. Even he puts it 50% off, people don't want it. You see that in the grocery stores here, when you go, after the sale is over or the sale is coming to an end, people bought and bought. You have the leftover berries that have all become green and moldy. The strawberries that no one wants smashed up. Oranges that have really been, yani, their, their color has changed and are right about to rot. A view and a hand chosen and picked. And what remains is the useless thing that they're going to throw away now because no one wants it. That's the hufala. That's the hufala. The leftover stuff at the bottom of the batch that no one wants. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying that that's what's going to be left over from the people. The good stuff is all going to be gone. And since Allah azza wa jal, He values people, He puts the price tag on people, not from the region they come from, that are they from this geographical background, do they belong to this type of family or tribal system or a tribe. But instead Allah azza wa jal puts the value and the price tag on people based on the qualities they have. So these people, they will have absolutely no good qualities within them. So he says, لا يبالي لهم بالا Allah Azza wa Jal will not give them any attention, will not value them. Because they have nothing to give to Allah. They have nothing inside them that impresses Allah Azza wa Jal. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he mentioned something similar. He says, يذهب الصالحون أسلافا That the pious people are going to go away. This hadith that I mentioned was in Bukhari, and this one, this hadith of Abdullah Mas'ud, this athar is from Tabrani al fi Mu'jib al Kabir. He mentions that the pious people will go away one after another. After the pious people are gone, only the people of doubt will remain. The people who doubt everything. Ahlu Rayb. The people who doubt. And they will be disease, they will be suffering from this diseases, uh, disease of, of speculative skepticism by which it will, now allow, it will not allow them to recognize anything good as good or regard anything wrong as wrong. Everything will be subjective. Every single thing will be subjective. There will be no absolute truths. There will be no basic line which we don't cross. There will be no such thing as this is the limit to how much we are going to change our ways. This is the limit of how much we are going to water down our faith. This is the limit of how much we're willing to compromise. There will be no line. It will be a moving target to an extent that nothing will remain from what we call the thawabit. Thawabit are those parts of the religion that don't change. That are set in stone no matter what part of the world you are, no matter what region, no matter what century, those things that never change are the thawabit that you have no difference of opinion between two Muslims about. Though thawabit also will go away. Ma'roof will become munkar, munkar will become ma'roof. Not only people will be so full of doubt that they won't be able to recognize good as good and bad as bad, but rather other hadith mention that they will begin to regard good as evil and evil as good. So Rasulullah ﷺ mentioned that not only will people, uh, the, yani Abdullah Mas'ud says, not only these people of doubt won't be able to recognize anything good as good and evil as evil, but in another narration, although the chain of narration is weak, but the meaning, you tell me yourself, this is one of the miracles that subhanAllah, the chain of if a hadith is chain of narration does is mean is weak, does not mean it doesn't exist. The Prophet is reported to have been uh, as told as Sahaba, and there's different narrations of that. Imam, uh, Imam Ghazali mentioned this in his Ihya as well. 
and other scholars have mentioned it, where the Prophet ﷺ addressed his Sahaba. And he said, Kayfa antum? In one hadith, Kayfa bikum? What will happen to you? He said, Kayfa bikum? In one hadith, he said, Kayfa bikum? Ida taga nisa'ukum, wa fasaqa shubbanukum, wa taraktum jihadukum. Three things. What's going to happen to you? What will be your situation on that day when three characteristics will become salient amongst you? Number one, Taga nisa'ukum, your women will cross all boundaries and will become openly belligerent against Allah Azza wa Jal. They will, Taga, he recited today, Inna lama taga al-ma'u hamalnakum fil jariya. When the water will go above the limit, you have a sea level. You have a limit at, at beyond which of, uh, uh, if it goes, if the water level of the sea rises above that, you have a flood. Taga, taga al is when the water goes above a certain limit that is acceptable, that won't cause damage. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna lama taga al that the water level just went up, shot up due to the rain at the time of the tufan of Nuh alayhi salam. So taga is when you cross that boundary after which it's a hell breaks loose. It's a tsunami. Rasulullah says, Taga nisa'ukum. Your women will break that boundary. Your women will break that boundary. Wafasaka shubbanukum. Your youth, your youngsters will become open sinners without shame, without fear. That social media will be an outlet, for example, to shamelessly ex express a person's life of sin and vice in front of the world. That sin which was done covertly. People will gloat over it, over those sins on social media without any fear of repercussion. This is what we call the mujahir, who Allah hates and will not forgive unless they seek genuine forgiveness from this. Is the one who committed a sin and Allah could have exposed that person while he or she committed that sin. But Allah out of his love for that person covered him up. But in the morning this person himself out of the audacity uncovers his faults in front of the entire world. These are the mujahirun who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes because they are openly telling Allah azza wa jal, here I am, do what you're going to do about it. Do what you want to do about it. I openly disobey you in your face, as we say. Mujahir, who use social media today to express their sins, to expose their sins. So Rasulullah s.a.w. said, فَسَقَ شُبَّانُكُمْ your, your youth will become open sinners. And third, وَتَرَقْتُمْ jihadakum, And you, as a collectively, as an ummah, will stop struggling and striving for the deen. People will struggle and strive for jobs and education. But when it comes for generally deen itself, people will start asking for the fatwa. Is that permissible? Is this okay? Isn't this too much? Isn't this too hardcore? Etc, etc. But no one will ask the fatwa, Ya Akhi, you've been out of, out of the house for the past 12 hours, working away, making money for the past, you know, 10 years. And look at your wife, you haven't given her attention. Look at your kids, they're at the mercy of the iPhone and the iPad because you're not at home. No one will go say, where's the fatwa permissibility of this? To leave your sons and daughters unattended at home every single day. You leave in the morning and they're sleeping. You come back at night and they're sleeping. The only time you hear from them is when they need money. But no one asks, where is the fatwa for the permissibility of this? They say, no, we have to. But if a person were to make a sacrifice for deen, all of a sudden the entire community starts pitying them, starts showing sympathy. Poor wife, poor children, poor person, he's lost his mind. As collectively as an ummah, people will leave sacrifice and struggle for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Sahaba, when they heard these three things, it shocked them. They couldn't believe that the women will become like this. They couldn't believe that the youth will become like this. And they couldn't believe that that ummah that was established on sacrifice would collectively leave sacrifice for the greater good. So they said, Is that seriously possible? Is that really going to happen, Ya Nabi Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith mentions, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِي وَأَشَدُّ مِنْهُ سَيَكُونَ I swear, I take, I take an oath in the, on, 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 on that being in whose hands lies my life. Worse than this will happen. Worse than this will happen. So they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah, what could be worse than this? So he said, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ إِذْ لَمْ تَأْمُرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَمْ تَنْهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ 
What will happen when you will stop encouraging people to do good and you will stop prohibiting each other from doing evil? Now that again was a concept that was foreign.